Hello everyone, my name is Jacqueline Hayden and I'm the Director of the Centre for European Studies here in Trinity. I want to explain why I think that European Studies is one of the best degrees we have on offer. The hallmark of European Studies is that it is interdisciplinary. That's a big plus because it gives you, as graduates, the linguistic and analytical tools to step into quality jobs when you leave college. It's also an excellent springboard for those of you thinking of doing a postgraduate degree. The European Studies programme is uniquely designed to equip you with the skills you require to address the problems and issues we face in a globalised world. While the European Studies programme casts its gaze on European languages, culture and history, its remit goes beyond the geographical boundaries of Europe. The programme offers students the opportunity to explore philosophical concepts and ideas, as well as introducing you to the analytical tools used by social scientists to interrogate the world. So my big message today is that a European Studies degree marries the knowledge and skill set derived from both humanities and social sciences, leaving graduates uniquely equipped as they enter the jobs market. So let's look at the core features of the programme. Of course, language acquisition is uh, crucial and it's a vital part of the programme. So fluency in two major languages, European languages, is the end product of the programme for you. But you'll also have a detailed understanding of modern European history, the history of ideas, literatures, and of course, cultures. We also, and this is the key and most uh, important uh, single thing about the uniqueness of the European Studies programme is the fact that you combine social science modules. So you'll have a detailed understanding of contemporary European politics, society and economy. Now moving on to the languages, it's really uh, uh, important to remember that language acquisition <clears throat> is a major goal of European Studies. Um, and as you can see, you can take languages from uh, fr fr such as French, German, Italian, Polish, Russian, Spanish and indeed Irish. No student may take more than one language as a beginner, but you can take Italian, Spanish, Russian, German and Polish uh, as a beginner. Now, one thing that is very different and unimportant about the European Studies programme is the year abroad in third year. Many students find the prospect of the year studying abroad to be one of the great attractions of European Studies. Afterwards, most say that the experience is the highlight of their time in college. Students, of course, get the chance to immerse themselves in the language and culture of their exchange city and country. But on a personal level, they are able to spread their wings, find out who they are, meet new people and forge friendships. And students often talk about uh, afterwards, in the years after their exchange, talk of it as being a milestone and as an invaluable pathway on their route uh, through life. Now, just moving on to explain the breadth of the uh, year abroad. As you can see, we've got 180 partner agreements with 22 countries, universities in 22 countries. But because we've more than one agreement with many universities, in fact, there are 420 different agreements uh, throughout uh, Europe and some other parts as well. Now, just moving on to uh, the countries uh, where our programmes are based, there are four, for instance, in France, in Bordeaux, Grenoble, Paris, Strasbourg. In Germany, there are three, Freiburg, Hamburg and Tübingen. In Poland, we have the ancient and beautiful city of Krakow to help host our students. And in Spain, we've actually five uh, partner arrangements in uh, Sevilla, uh, Salamanca, Alcala, uh, Oviedo and Zaragoza. Um, as you can see also from the slide, we have three universities in Italy with Pavia, Siena and Milan and we have an, an arrangement in Moscow as well. And as you can see, there are also um, uh, arrangements with the Consortium for Advanced Studies Abroad in Cuba, Argentina and uh, Chile. I just want to say a few words now about the modules you'll take in European Studies. It's, it's a really um, interdisciplinary programme. And in your first year, in your what we call the junior fresh, there are three compulsory modules in history, the history of ideas, and a discipline in social science. 
as I mentioned a, a moment ago. So they're the three core foundational uh, courses in first year. You, in terms of the history module, um, the module uh, uh, is entitled Europe 1500 to 1800, Power and Culture. And this is a fascinating module and it covers the intellectual, social, political history of the 16th, 17th and 18th centuries. It looks at the development of state power, it looks at the impact of religious reform in the 16th century and the political and military rivalry between European states during the 17th century. Um, in t you know, the teaching and learning um, in these programmes is very uh, varied. You will engage in class discussions. It won't be just lecture based. You will give presentations. You will write about the key themes in this period. You look at the intellectual changes that emerged during the Renaissance, the Reformation and the Enlightenment. You look at the emergence of rival churches across most of the continent, the impact of the printing revolution, which of course was one of the key developments in the modernization process. So the increasing power of territorial states, the expansion of states into the colonial space, in other words, the beginnings of globalization, these are the kinds of uh, areas that you will look at when you study this particular uh, program. A really interesting part of the foundation uh, program in European studies is the introduction to the history of ideas. This module is about the evolution of European thought in the 20th century. So the module looks at the intellectual and cultural climate in Europe before and after the two world wars. And a lot of focus and emphasis is put on the question of how intellectual and cultural trends reacted or contributed to the threat of war and how they dealt with the catastrophes in their aftermath. And many topics are included in, in, in this particular program. The pre-war crisis of values, the emergence of social Darwinism, urban culture, um, of the European metropolis and the development and uh, history of, the so of socialist ideas and the upsurge of right-wing thought after the First World War. So these are just some of the ideas uh, that you will be looking at in the history, the introduction to the history of ideas. Now, as I said to you a moment ago, a key feature of European studies is the interdisciplinary nature of the programme. And so as part of your foundation year, European studies students um, are uniquely equipped by taking social science modules from the get-go. Not only are you introduced to the core concepts at the heart of your chosen area, be it political science, be it economics or sociology, you can, through module choice, equip yourself with the technical research skills associated with whichever of the disciplines you choose to take. So in opting to take either economics or political science or sociology, you create your own pathway in the social sciences. And so depending on which of these subjects you take, which discipline you opt for, you will continue with that pathway throughout your degree program. program. Now, I want to say a quick word about some of the programs you can take as you progress uh, in European uh, studies. In the second year, we have a really interesting programme on the making of modernity from 1750 to 1820. And this module will introduce students to key concepts of modernity as they constituted themselves during the so-called Saddle Epoch, that's around 1800. This course will cover the main philosophical and cultural trends in the European Enlightenment and Romanticism, and will explore how culture and aesthetic discourses interacts with politics and society. And that's just an important note to remember. There is this interdisciplinary nature of European studies. So it's not just about the humanities and language and culture. It's about the interaction with politics and society. There is another history offering in the, in the second year, um, Imperialism to Globalism, Europe and the World from 1860 to 1970. And this module is really interesting and investigates some of the events and processes which have led to a more integrated world order 
that we saw between the mid-19th century and the later 20th century. And for most of that period, much of the world was carved up between a number of intercontinental empires centred in Europe and how these empires grew, exerted control and in due course retreated. That's the focus of this particular thought module. And in your final year, um, you, you, you get to explore a truly wide range of modules. Uh, a really, truly wide, wide range of mo modules are open to you. One um, that is, in my view, um, a great follow on to your foundational year is uh, Modernity in Society, Ideas and Culture in Europe since 1850. And this module explores some of the key ideas and theories that emerged since 1850 in European thought. It introduces students, for instance, to some of the most influential theories of social change, to the cultural representation of modern societies, and to the trauma and the traumatic and violent consequences of modern social transformation. Uh, and I'm thinking of episodes such as totalitarian episodes and, and of course, the use of uh, genocide. Now, the module, this module, um, I should remark too, is very important because it provides fourth year students, senior softster students, with an opportunity for an, an, an independent research project. And you complete that in your senior, senior softster year. And this project allows students to develop an independent piece of research, which they can, of course, use subsequently as the basis uh, or as the stepping stone, perhaps, to a, a postgraduate piece of work. Uh, or indeed uh, some project that will transition you to the workplace. Um, I'd just like to say a few words about, uh, you know, where you can go. What are your pathways after graduation from European Studies? I've had the great pleasure of teaching European Studies students in my role as lecturer in political science, and I've followed the professional development of many of my students closely. Many have chosen to continue to postgraduate study and, and have done brilliantly and enjoyed that pathway very much. But others, of course, go on to roles in diplomacy, international organisations such as the European Union or the OECD. Um, our graduates um, are much in demand in the financial sector because of the analytical skills that I spoke about being derived from social science and, of course, their command of languages. Many find themselves in exciting jobs in the non-governmental organisation sector, be it international or local. And of course, translation uh, in, it, in, in its very many wide forms is also another avenue. Um, the key attribute that makes European studies students stand out is their command of languages, the analytical tools of social science, and their deep knowledge of European history and the evolution of ideas. The world is literally your oyster with a degree in European studies. So I hope this talk has been helpful to you. Um, European studies at TCD is a really welcoming and happy place. We do try to nurture your ideas and dreams and we do and we'll look forward to meeting you in the future. Thank you for your attention.